Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on Friday, March 9th, 10.15 p.m. Mountain Time 2018. You're witnessing the re-eruption of Shin Modake. Lava has been confirmed. If you can't see it in the video, I don't know what you're looking at. Hilarious that they need to write an article about it, but this is coming to you thanks from Volcano Watch, formerly UKZ. Heads up, they rock. They've got the best split screen live coverage of multi-volcano views around the world, and they're covering the Grand Solar Minimum just like we are. And we love them, so come over and give them support. Get in their chat room and watch some volcanoes erupting live. On with the update. The, that's not the only thing on fire. The Northern Hemisphere. Take a look at the Aurora forecast. This is happening now live. Get out there if you're up in Maine and take a look. All of this part of central Canada, north of the Great Lakes, on fire. Aurora visibility 100% in the entire swath that we're looking at in red here. This might be a chance for you in Minnesota in the coming hours or Wisconsin to get a glimpse. Michigan could be you as well. You're in the 50 to 30% probability over the next 8 to 10 hours. So go outside and take a look. This is all thanks to the plasma filament that destabilized two days ago from the sun here near this plague. It was right in front of the plague here, which is not a sunspot, by the way. Um, so this filament has arrived in a big way. You can see the sun is completely minimum here at A range, but we saw a little perturbation and a jump up in activity up to solar wind is now sitting at around 460 kilometers per second, and it is giving us uh, geomagnetic instability here at KP4. You can see the magne magne magnetometer is going a little bit off kilter, but the biggest effect so far from this plasma filament um, is the aurora and even coming in in the southern hemisphere 100 percent aurora possibility here uh in antarctica so i'm sure they're getting some good views and we're going to see some excellent pictures tomorrow from this event heads up this nor'easter quinn which wreaked havoc with flooding high winds and power outages is being reported on very little there are still tens of thousands of people without power and there's very little information in the news about this wonder what's going on there. Nothing to see here. But there is freeze warnings all the way down in Tallahassee, Florida tonight. Uh, 33 degrees is the, the forecast, but the freeze warnings extend far out down to Cross City and over here towards Panama City. Um, this is going to be a chilly night for you in the south once again. As we descend in the Grand Solar Minimum, this is going to be a normal thing. Southwest Florida forecast is for cool weather with extreme fire danger. This is going to extend for days in Florida, reaching all the way down to the Naples area where my brother lives. If we come over to the GFS model here, I had it loaded up to the correct temperature, so we're going to let that go by. But what else is happening in that area is more manatees dying from cold stress this winter. This article coming out today. It's on pace for another cold, harsh record year for manatee deaths, according to an environmental watchdog group. Already 166 manatees have died statewide. State statistics show through March 2nd. 51 manatees. Cold spells have claimed the lives of 51 manatees, including 10 of the 22 deaths in Bavard County. And more than 150 manatees have died in just the first seven weeks of this year. It has something to do with this cold weather coming all the way down into Florida. If we just step this through, take a look. 47 degrees in southern Florida on March 15th, Thursday. That's going to kill some more manatees. Not looking good for you down there. So that's not going to be helpful. And that cold weather is persisting into spring. Um, and the heat returns. So cold weather at least until March 21st for you in North Florida and Central Florida. Heads up. Grand Solar Minimum is upon us. We're going to be getting heavy snow out here in uh, Colorado for the next seven days. Up to two feet is forecast for the Rocky Mountains all the way to the Southern Rockies, which is a good thing. Now all this good uh, record snow up in British Columbia is a dangerous thing. And fears uh, grow amid rising temperatures and above average snowpack. 
You mean record. All-time record since records were kept, Snowpack. Some areas are sitting at more than 140% above normal, and that's going to lead to amazing white water come this spring, as well as the devastation of many homes on the river valleys extreme weather could be the norm we're predicting it and now it's coming out in the mainstream local experts in the uk warn that Kerry could experience increasingly bizarre weather patterns moving forward as was shown in historic documents in past empire collapses through the central greenland ice core correlations with the historic record which we have right here and you can couple that <coughs> with the current scientific consensus on what's going to happen with our sun moving forward. Heads up, cycle 25. 30% diminishment coming from the mainstream. We're suggesting it's going to be 50% diminished at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Let's get into stratospheric radiation. Posted this today on solar shutdown. The idea is that cosmic rays seed clouds by ionizing molecules in Earth's atmosphere that draw in other molecules to create the aerosols around which water vapor can condense to form cloud droplets. These are not chemtrails you're seeing. They're contrails that are being formed in massive quantities due to a unique atmospheric condition caused increased stratospheric radiation or cosmic ray flux, folks. And here are the numbers. Those that are asking about why is it more dangerous to live in New England as we descend into the grand solar minimum, look at the blue graph. There has been almost a 20% increase in stratospheric radiation in New England in the last year and a half. The lowest numbers are coming from the southwest. California experiencing 13% in the north central region. This comes from the work of Heinrich Svensmach in 1996 in a paper that was ignored because of the global warming nonsense that we've had to endure for decades. Now, when you have more clouds, the low-lying clouds on Earth are white, just like snow. So when you have record snow and record clouds, you have record albedo, and that leads to rapid cooling of planetary bodies. Because the effect of the cooling of the Earth by reflecting incoming sunshine back out into space is a no-brainer. And since the sun's magnetic field tends to deflect cosmic rays, and we're currently in a pole shift with a, mag a waning magnetosphere unlike we've ever seen in modern history or in thousands of years since the last interglacial is going to lead to in amazing weather phenomenon and biblical flooding, which we're only beginning to see. Here's the paper from Svensmark. I'll leave it to you, the PDF. It's only five pages. Read it. If you don't read it, then you don't really care about what's happening here. You need to start to get familiar. This information needs to get through to the future. It's not going to be left up in the cloud. That's coming back to Earth, folks. Parts of North Queensland still at risk of flooding. Police warn, totally fluxed. In Australia, it has not stopped. We've been reporting for at least six weeks of record flooding across the entire continent. Families rescued as flooding turns to disaster levels. A disaster situation has been declared and evacuations could be ordered following flooding across northern Queensland, impacting the Ingham and Halifax homes, cutting major roads off and forcing off the closures of schools. So, not looking good. It's only going to get worse. And I just showed you the data. Now they're talking about an earthquake swarm near Mount Etna, so that's a heads up. In my opinion, it's nothing significant, but the strongest of the quakes, a magnitude 3.3, struck at 9.50 a.m. local time, just over four miles north of Ragiana, a small commune north uh, southeast of Palermo. And just a minute prior to it, the same area, magnitude 2.8 tremor was detected. Thereafter, a third magnitude 2.5 tremor was felt. The three quakes were relatively shallow, striking between zero and two kilometers depth. 
which is indicative of magma underneath of a volcano. Seismic update. No quakes of note. We have some aftershocks off of Papua New Guinea from the major 6.8 that popped off yesterday. Again, 4.5 off the coast here of Northern California. Standard frack quakes in the region. Um, and the Caribbean plate here is of still rocking, and we want to be watching this for another large event in the near future. But because space weather is up, lithospheric flexure is down. But lava flow is confirmed at uh, Shinmodake. We looked at the video at the beginning, and we're going to get a little bit more fun in. Because lava has been confirmed. I guess they didn't see the video over here at uh, Volcano Watch, did they, guys? <laughs> we knew uh, instantly because it's live. A flow of lava has been confirmed at Mount Shinmo in South Kyushu following a series of eruptions starting earlier in the month according to the JMA. Around 10, 10 a.m. on March 9th, someone actually was watching <laughs> Volcano Watch, and they noticed the volcano erupt with lava. That's nice. So come over and give them support. All the links will be down below. The bottom left of the video here, it says show more. Click it. Now, Mayon Volcano, after they reduced uh, the warning level, of course, as in all of these volcanoes, as soon as they reduce the number, within 24 hours it re-erupts. And same thing happening at Mayon here. <coughs> Rumbling is heard for miles as lava explodes seven times in 24 hours. We have some nighttime footage that will go into the day. It's worth it. And we've got it. Boom! There she is. And this is uh, Mayon erupting quite significantly right at the cusp of daytime. And earlier in the evening, uh, the lava was obvious. Fountaining down the sides of the volcano with several larger events happening. It's just a very poorly focused video. So we'll only spend a second on it. But Mayan Volcano has continued to spew red-hot lava and clouds of ash into the air after it exploded seven times in just 24 hours as residents report the sound of rumbling from the towering crater for miles. Look how funny it is. She's laughing about the volcano. It's so funny. The Philippines' most active volcano shows no signs of letting up as officials revealed lava continued to flow from 7.19 a.m. on Thursday to 6 a.m. local time erupting on seven separate periods during that time frame. The Mayon Volcano, which stands 8,077 foot tall, is one of the most active in the Philippines and has recently awoken since we started covering the Grand Solar Minimum. As cosmic rays increase, so do, does volcanic activity worldwide. Let's talk about some other interesting things that we like to talk about here at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Bright flash, sonic boom, as minivan-sized bolide explodes, explodes over Washington. This was seen up in BC, a very bright explosion believed to be produced by a minivan-sized bolide lit up the night sky over British Columbia, Washington, and Oregon today. Maybe you guys saw it. If you did, leave it in the comments. I'd like to know. There's really no good video of this. Just a big flash and everyone going, oh my God, it's Jesus. So come over and look at the Jesus event yourself here. And maybe you can see God. We're going to end on some nonsense, and we're also going to support some of our friends in the community. California just passed a law regulating cow farts. <clears throat> this is how insane the global warming alarmists have gone. In California's consistent quest to put the plug in global warming, the Smurf Blue State just put the butt plug in the cow. Now, these backpacks that they are mandating they put on cows, which is going to in effect this year, Collect methane by actually drilling a hole in the side of the cow into one of its stomachs and putting a tube in there. It's completely disgusting, and that's where you're getting the milk from to feed your children while they have a fart pack on. 
Now, your milk is going to skyrocket because of this insanity. And this is going to save us from global warming. Sadly, not all farmers can afford to purchase the biodigester methane gas digesters that are required to actually turn the farts into energy. The st stupidest idea that was ever concocted. This is what it looks like, and it's an, actually a medical procedure, and cows have to wear this apparatus while they live with tubes going directly into their body collecting their fart gas. Look at how... This guy's like, what the f is going on? And this cow is like, are you shitting me? It's gone too far, guys. But Tango Bayas, a new member to the Grand Solar community, as far as YouTube channel is concerned, contacted me and he's put up all these videos today just for us. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six videos in one day. These are mini tidbits of Grand Solar Minimum solutions, including information on how to use biodynamic tools like liquid aminos and seaweed to bolster the health of your seeds, how to sprout seeds uh, soillessly, seaweed and aminos I just clicked on, which I didn't want to. But let's come over here and give them some support. I'll leave you links to Tango Bay Us, whatever that means. Subscribe and watch these little videos. He gives you some solutions on how to make these little wicks for your pots, for your hydro systems, or for just sprouting. And here, how to do a soilless, a no soil growing of microgreens. He's going to do peas in here that he just soaked in some seaweed. And he'll tell you why. And here, I haven't even watched Rethinking the Light Cycle. So check him out. And tell them Diamond sent you. <laughs> now, the I, go or, I Grow Organic, I Go Solar Single Slope Greenhouse is what we're going to be getting here at Oppenheimer Ranch Project. We've got these engineers over in China designing it directly for us. 120 feet long with 40 feet of mushroom in the back. So we're going to be testing this this year on site, making videos on the build and the performance of this baby as we head into the winter here at the high alpine environment. And if it works out good, we're going to be suggesting that you guys buy these up because if all works out, these are going to provide amazing amounts of food. And if we use geothermal technology in here, we're going to keep these babies above freezing all winter and grow all year long. We're talking about CO2 enrichment from the mushroom side pumped into the vegetable side, all automated with insulated rollers and covers. Just like these pictures here. So we're, rate, we're waiting on what the designs are they're making for us. We gave them the specifications and we can't wait to see what they've drawn up for us. We're going to have this rear mushroom room. We're going to extend it the entire length so that we can get more storage, uh, more th uh, insulation between the north wall here and maybe house a little bit of a few of our wolfers back there. So stay tuned for more updates on the iGo Solar Single Slope Greenhouse that we are going to be installing here uh, this spring at Oppenheimer Ranch. And that's a heads up. Can't go away with a boom. <laughs> a little baby boom. Guys, times are changing. The mainstream agrees that Solar Cycle 25 will be at this level. We're suggesting that it will be more like cycle 14 or 12, probably 11. And it will be a wake-up call for the masses the next four years. If the grid holds up, you have time to prepare. If you're not preparing now, you're wasting time. Every moment lost is another instant of misery you could be uh, experiencing when the shit hits the fan. Be safe, everybody.